and I just barely missed him. <laughs> At 110 yards. All right, Jared, tell us the story. Oh. So from the very beginning, we knew that this hunt was not gonna be like any other elk hunt that we had experienced. Even just on the drive out, uh, the country was was very different from what we had hunted elk in before. This hunt took place in southwest Utah, and uh, Jared was able to pick the tag up on an auction and uh, felt very fortunate to do so. Again, just big, expansive country, middle of September. Uh, the rut was just starting to heat up, so it was uh, about to get really good. So the country we were hunting again was very much desert country. It was the middle of September, and uh, we found these cows that had keyed in on some riparian and hay fields. They were utilizing for water and food, and we knew that cows this time of year were gonna be a key um, to finding bulls. And so every morning we would come back, every day, every evening, come back and check this group of cows. There ended up being about 50 cows that we would find. The bulls that were with the cows weren't what we were quite looking for, as this area has potential to, to offer a truly giant bull. Uh, we tried different things. We'd go back into different canyons and water sources in the area. Just gorgeous country, lots of different opportunities, ideas to try and find and locate and hunt elk. It was, uh, it was truly a hunting paradise for elk. Here we are again, uh, back at the alfalfa field checking on those cows. Um, every morning it seemed like there was different bulls that would show up in this group here. Again, if they didn't have something that we were interested in, we would continue looking. And uh, there was always different bulls showing up out here, um, chasing these cows and competing for them. It felt like you were in a in an unreal, unrealistic place chasing elk again, just out in this greasewood and sagebrush flats. The six point bull here, he was leaving the field one day as we caught him right here, um, made a bugle sound at him and he turns and looks at us, just a gorgeous bull. But again, we're looking for next caliber up here. So um, that afternoon, we came out to this water source and built this blind here. Jared ended up spending the night sitting on this water. It's certainly dry here, but you can see the clouds building around us as we were constructing this blind. Rain came in this evening. It really rained on us hard, and that continued to occur for quite some time. In the next few days, it, it rained on us pretty consistently. Antelope are rutting too fun to watch them do their thing, chase each other. He's got a thick beam, doesn't he? Yeah, he's heavy. Yeah, his fifth and sixth are a little weak. We continue to search for elk. We ended up catching this bull one morning working up out of this draw to his right here as he goes across the skyline but we followed him as he moved back into the hills here he would go over ridge line and we'd have to pull around and find him again finally dropped into a canyon 
and uh, we're working up the ridge here with Jared and Craig as we uh, try and relocate this bull. You can see the clouds again here, and uh, we were filled with excitement as we climbed this hill trying to search for this bull. We just took our time climbing up into there. Shortly after this, it started to rain again. Craig made a big loop around, located the bull, and, and we circled around and ended up hunkering down in the any shelter that we could find, to be honest, including this rock that Jared had crawled under here. We ended up locating this bull again, bedded down. Jared ended up making a stalk. Again, it's raining here pretty hard. It was difficult to keep the rain off the camera and make everything right. But Jared made a great stalk around to the right where this bull is looking now. He got up and, and moved down the draw, across the draw onto our side of it, and works his way up towards Jared. Jared got a shot right there as the bull kind of jumps and spins, heads back down the draw, and um, we start cow chirping and calling at him, and the bull stops, starts looking back our way. He still wasn't sure if he wanted to play with us too much, um, but again, we kept kind of cow chirping at him, trying to keep his interest. As you can see here, he certainly held up Jared had missed on that initial shot when he spun and as you can tell he's just a gorgeous bull would have been thrilled to have this one but what a neat experience here Jared never got another shot here bull ended up heading down the draw on and out of the country and just an awesome bull awesome experience this hunt tested us in ways we'd never experienced on an elk hunt before for sure So here we spot this bull, man, and we ended up nicknaming him the big bull. He came out here and laid down first thing in the morning. We made a stock in on him. It was just one of the most painful stocks I've ever been on. Just in that desert, the grit and grime, the sand. You'd think sand would be soft to stock in, but this had a little gravel in it. And we just worked our way out there. We ended up getting like uh, knee pads to crawl through the desert on and uh, just had this bull circling us to uh, eventually get our wind. Jared did get a shot and uh, I'll let him tell the story here. And I just barely missed him. <laughs> At 110 yards. All right, Jared, tell us the story. Oh, I got up to the bush and I was quiet, so I don't know what happened. My knee pad just actually just broke and that may have spooked him, but it, it snapped. Uh, but I, I just noticed his head bobbing a little bit, so I thought, all right, I'll just stay here and kind of gauge where he's at and how, how far it is. Uh, he looked like he was 50 yards, but he was, he was a good 100 yards. He came, he actually took off, didn't know what we were. I cow chirped, Ben cow chirped, and uh, he started coming back. He put his head down, I drew. I just knew that was the time for me to draw. And uh, he didn't like me standing up, so he, I couldn't cow chirp and hold back, so uh, <laughs> I, I just had to take a shot at that one. And um, that one I actually thought I hit, but we can't find the arrow, and I definitely checked the animal. He's got no blood. But this last one was just a Hail Mary, and I was, if I would have just put the pin up just a little bit higher. Here's the bull's tracks right there. And you can see the arrow. That's the track. I mean, woof. Yeah. So close. So close. So we made a pretty awesome stock though. Just needed another 50 yards to go. Jeez. One of the challenges to this hunt was just in the sagebrush country, trying to get a good read on on uh, distance and everything else with the rangefinder was difficult, just working out to get within range. Um, after that chance, the bull disappeared for essentially three days. We come back on the third day and, and he's the big bull's back with all these cows out in the center pivot. There's a bull out there we called Broken Bull. 
he's broken on his right side. Um, they ended up getting in a fight, competing over those cows. It was something to watch. This day, we, we set up a blind, trying to get these elk to come past us as they moved back to the field. That didn't work, so we ended up getting out of the blind. It started raining on us as we were waiting for this big bull and 50 cows to come by us. Again, the wind was swirly. It was difficult to make it, make it work this day. We ended up getting caught by these elk as they moved towards the field. They hooked back around us, going back to the east, and kind of hooked around. And again, it's raining on us here, and so I struggled to keep the camera dry and lens clean and everything else. But we tried to make a move. Um, you can hear them bugling out there. We had a decoy with us, and we were just trying to be bold this day. We were we were getting down there in the time of the hunt, so we were trying to make things happen. Um, they ended up getting away from us. Here the bull is the next morning. We located him first thing in the morning. He had a little group of cows. We started stalking at about seven in the morning. And where we're filming this bull here, I'm about 200 yards away. Jared's still working closer. But just an incredible bull. Yeah, we just kept working here. And I held up and uh, Jared uh, made the move in there. I ended up now I'm getting the shot on film as uh, the decision was made to just focus on trying to harvest this bull. We'll let the story tell itself here for a minute. Okay, so update. Uh, Jared made a stalk into that bull and those cows got within I think it was 78 yards. Um, I had the decoy with me. I was sitting back about 250 yards, I think. And um, we stood the decoy up. Jared drew. I stood the decoy up and chirped. Got the bull to stand up. Jared shot. He kicked, jumped and kicked, took off running. Um, and uh, went over with his cows, watched him there. We cow chirped, he slowed right down to a walk. Um, looked like he was limping. And he actually even fell once, I thought he was done. Couldn't see any blood coming off either side. Talking to Jared, it sounds like the, the uh, shot was kind of a quartering two shot. So, tracked him for a little bit, and we had good blood. Um, he came over the hill with the cows, got into a, another draw with another bull in it. They ended up getting in a fight, and then he ended up leaving the cows. Him and the other bull headed south. Um, Craig and Jared took off. Um, I was following the blood and told them not to wait for me, so they were going around the other side to see if they could uh, get eyes on him. Let me a couple of bottles of water here, so I'm grabbing those and I'll head back along the road, see if I can cut his tracks and kind of follow him. See if I can see if he's still bleeding as he came across this road or if uh, he uh, is feeling lots better. He might just be living on adrenaline from the fight with that other bull. So we'll see how this kind of works out, but that's the current update. All right, so update. Uh, tracked the bull, they ripped around this other side. Bull ended up going across the road. Ripped around this other side and they've got him, found. Getting up and down and up and down and up and down. Which seems to indicate a decent hit. Uh, Craig said that he saw some bleeding from up in the main, kind of that dark brown stuff which would match up with the quartering two shot. So it sounds like we're headed in the right direction. I found some more blood on the other side of the road and they've got him out here some walking out across the desert to meet up with them. But pretty view. So we're able to locate that bull 
Sure enough, Jared did have a, a decent hit on him and was able to sneak in and get one more uh, shot on the bull and, and ended up harvesting this giant bull. Truly an unbelievable experience on an explainable place and just a bull of a lifetime. It was uh, truly one that we won't forget.